Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for part 5. In my last video, I was just getting ready to go over this matrix here that's coming up in this table that's in the book of De Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 15 through chapter 9, verse 3. And like I said in the other video, I think the matrixes pretty much say it all. Or maybe that's pronounced matrices, I'm not sure. But I think it pretty much says it all, so there's not even a need, need to search for any more terms. So I'll just go ahead and read the matrix. And it starts by saying, Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground, where was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint? Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end? And lest thou say in thy heart, My power and the might of my hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember Jehovah thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers as at this day. And it shall be, if thou, if thou shalt forget Jehovah thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. As the nations that Jehovah maketh to perish before you, so shall ye perish, because ye would not hearken unto the voice of Jehovah your God. Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over the Jordan this day, to go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fortified up to heaven, a people great and tall, the sons of the Anakim, who thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, Who can stand before the sons of Anak? Know therefore this day, that Jehovah thy God is he who goeth over before thee as a devouring fire, he shall destroy them. He will bring them down before thee, so shalt thou drive them out, and make them to perish quickly, as Jehovah hath spoken unto thee. So, like I said, the context pretty much says it all. It pretty much says how God feels about all of this. And it's even bringing up the Anakim, which are the giants. And I'll just pull that up for you so you can see that in Deuteronomy 9. I'll just pull it up over here real quick. I actually had to pull it up earlier to make sure that's what it was talking about. Okay, so over here it mentions the Anakims, Anakims, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, and the Anak. So let's pull it up here. And um, it says, Long-necked, a tribe of giants, descendants of Anak, which dwell in southern Canaan. Okay, and then when you go to Anak, it means neck, and it says progenitor of a family or tribe of giant people in Canaan. So this is talking about the giants, which is what the previous video was all about. So, this is who Israel's going to go up against. This is who Jehovah's going to fight against to defend Israel, according to Deuteronomy 8, verses 15 through 9, verse 3. And like I said, it, the matrix pretty much says it all. And there's another matrix that came up. This one, this one was in Jeremiah 17. And in the same way, the, the matrix just pretty much says it all, but 
I'll go ahead and pull up the terms that came up. And this one I had put in Arch, Bale, New York, Gate, Hell, Angel, Fallen, Adam, War. And you see Bale coming up in the pink at an angle over here with the letters B, A, A, L. You see Gate over here with the letters G, A, T, E. And you see new over here in the lavender, going at an angle with the letters N, E, W. You see York going at an angle this way in the bluish purple with the letters Y, O, R, K. You see Adam over here in the fuchsia, the letters A, T, O, M. You see war in the bright blue with the letters W, A, R. You see um, Angel over here in the yellow with the letters A, N, G. It looks like the, the E is over here sharing the E in New York and then L over here. And you also have Arch over here in the light red, crossing York, which is the second part of New York. The letters A, R, C, H. You see Fallen coming up here in the green. The letters F, A, L, L, E, N. And you see Hell over here in the light green. The letters H, E, L, L. And it's interesting, I just noticed this, just as I'm reading off the letters, that over here it says the gates of. Of course, it's talking about the gates of Jerusalem, which is in contrast to what they're trying to open up, which is the gates, the gates of hell. And you see that coming across in the green here. here. So that's very interesting. And I'll go ahead and go over the next term, I mean the, the rest of the terms, but let me just go ahead and read the matrix next, just so we can see what it says in there. And this is coming up in Jeremiah 17, verses 22 through 27. And it says, Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day, as I commanded your fathers. But they hearkened not, neither inclined their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear and might not receive instruction. And it shall come to pass, if you diligently hearken unto me, saith Jehovah, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but to hallow the Sabbath day, to do no work therein, then shall there enter in by the gates of this city kings and princes, sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, and from the places round about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the lowland, and from the hill country, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings, and sacrifices, and meal offerings, and frankincense, and bringing sacrifices of thanksgiving unto the house of Jehovah. But if ye will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden, and enter in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle, kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. So God is saying if we obey him and obey his commandments that we can enter into the gates of Jerusalem. But if not, he's going to send a fire to devour the palaces and the gates of Jerusalem and the fire will not be quenched. So again, I think God is telling us or 
I don't want to speak for God, but it seems to speak of, the matrix seems to speak of how God feels about it when people do not obey him. And then as you see these terms coming up in this matrix, I think it pretty much speaks for itself. And I'll see what other terms came up. I had tried putting in pit and door and then come out and then bees and war. So like I said, the terms are not that important. It's mainly what's in the matrix that's important. And I think this one was interesting as well. In Deuteronomy 1, there was yet another matrix that came up. And I'm not going to read all that because I think it's going to take too long. And I want to go ahead and wrap this video up and not have to do another one. But as you can see, there's like an endless... Uh, number of, of, of codes that could come up on this arch of bail in New York. You know, the, the more terms you put in, the more matrixes that come up. But I think I went over some of the main ones that, that I saw. And if nothing else, I think they show how God feels about all of this, what's taking place. And it shows that God knows everything before it happens. He's even mapped out the time frame and everything for when all of this is taking place. I don't know if it necessarily means anything's going to happen during this time, but we need to always be prepared. Like I said, God knows everything. He's encoded everything in the codes. He knows everything in advance. I think that divine hand of God has been proven time and again with these code tables. There's no doubt in my mind that God has placed these codes in the tables and that he knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. So, like I said, I don't know if anything's going to happen during this these days coming up in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but as always... We need to be prepared. We need to stay in prayer. Just watch and pray, as Jesus said, to be counted worthy to escape these things. They're going to come to pass. And always pray for our families and our loved ones that may not know about all these things. So we need to make sure to keep them in prayer. And as always, God bless. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. If there is a next video, I'm hoping there won't be. But... See you all next time. Bye.